In this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the wet bulb temperature using a macro in Microsoft Excel. Now this is a macro that I've already written for you so this video just kind of shows you how to use it. That is how to import data from the COAG Met Weather Data Network and calculate the wet bulb with the macro. So we're starting here in Microsoft Excel and one of the things that you always want available when you're using macros is this developer tab right here at the top. If that's not showing in uh, your Excel, go over to File and Options and Customize Ribbon and make sure that this developer tab is checked right here. Okay, so I went to Options, Customize Ribbon, make sure the developer tab is checked. Okay, um, then you want to load the file that we're working with and it's called wet bulb macro 4 and here it is and sometimes it will ask you um, if it's okay to open a macro enabled file and if it does ask you that go ahead and say yes so here is our blank spreadsheet with the headers for the hourly COAG met weather data across the top. So the first thing we need to do is bring in the data that we're interested in. Got another sheet over here. So I'm out here in our familiar COAG met data retrieval system. I've picked uh, a period at the beginning of the July in 2014 and I've picked the Fort Collins location. Want hourly weather data? I hit submit. There it is in comma separated form. Hit control A to select it, control C to copy it. Now I'm going to paste it back here into my macro enable spreadsheet. Then we go to the data tab, text to columns. tab and comma and again, like normal we see our data now spread out across the top of the uh, spreadsheet in proper order. Now I'm ready to run the macro to calculate the wet bulb. So to do that you go to the developer tab, you click on macros and our macro is named T-Wet. So you just hit run and it inserts some columns you see here with T wet being the last one. Now recall that calculating this wet bulb requires knowledge of atmospheric pressure. Now most of the time it's plenty good just to enter the site elevation and estimate the pressure. So that's the way I've written it. I'm going to put in 1,525 meters for Fort Collins, Colorado. I hit OK and you can see the macro executed and it calculated the psychrometric constant, the dew point temperature, then it did this iterative procedure to calculate the wet bulb. Now in the macro I went over and enabled the iterate iteration. I uh, recall that from some previous videos. If you go to options here and formulas you have to have this enable interactive calculation for this all to work. Now the macro does it for you automatically so you don't even really have to worry about that. And so now all you've got to do to fill in your spreadsheet is select this whole section here and double cl and click on this little uh, button here on the lower right hand corner. Double click it and there's all your wet bulbs. Okay, and we can plot that real quickly against, it's kind of fun to see the relationship between all the temperatures. Uh, let's start with our x-axis being date time. Let's hold down the control key, select mean temperature, dew point temperature, and wet bulb temperature. And we hit insert. and we want scatter and we can see our results now. 
where we're plotting versus time over these four days air temperature in the blue the dew point temperature in the orange and the actual wet bulb temperature here as we've talked about before it's quite common to see all three temperatures converge to a single point right before sunup uh, and you certainly see it here on this day they're just almost all identical and this is very common especially in humid climates less so in arid climates so here in Colorado along the front range it's quite arid so some days we see this and on other days we don't okay depending on what's going on with the weather but in other parts of the world where it's quite humid you will see this convergence every morning so this macro shows you a very easy way to calculate the wet bulb temperature using that iterative procedure and the theory behind this was laid out in a handout that was available uh, earlier in the class but feel free to use that and if you're really interested go over to the developer tab click on macros and you can click edit and you can actually see the macro uh, the details of how it works okay and I also highly recommend that um, you learn how to record macros for your environmental science work and that's using this button record macro and uh, a really powerful feature in Excel that uh, enables you to do a lot of things and save lots and lots of time especially when working with uh, formatted weather data